All right, welcome to another video. <laughs> but what am I seeing? Am I dreaming? What, what the hell is going on? It's a drill battery. It's basically a full-size toy. It's upside down, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> it's a full-size toy, and that's what that's the idea. Is that like you're thinking you have a toy and you want more power, so you take a drill battery and you clip it in, but bigger, full-size. Full-size. All right, introduce yourself. First. Okay. Hey, I'm Mr. G, uh, Ron. I teach high school auto and metal shop, but I also have a workshop called Mr. G's Workshop in New Jersey. Just felt like doing a build that would inspire some people and think about, you know, going electric for conversions, just an option, and that's basically it. All right, so what's the base vehicle to start with? Okay, so this is a, Daiha a 99 Daihatsu High Jet. It had like 40 horsepower, five speed. I will say, even though it's a mini truck, it is literally a miniature truck. It's got four wheel drive, it's got a five wow. speed, it's got a transfer case, it's got high low, and it's got plenty of torque. And it drives great. It's just that we could add a little more power and put a Hyper 9 in there. All right, so when did you start this project? And then let's go through all the technical details. Yeah, so about a year ago, I, I got the truck because it had needed some rust repair. So we do some rust repair and I teach welding classes. And so we kind of use it as a little teaching instruction. Then we added all the electronics just right on the bed, just so you could see it. Yeah, the yeah. whole idea is to see it. So that was about a year ago. And then all of a sudden, I, I was just drawing it one day, and I had this drawing where I was like, you know what, it would be funny if there was a drill battery in here. So, <laughs> and you did it. <laughs> yes. So I showed it to a friend of mine who does foam sculptures. Yeah. Shout out to Dane. He is amazing. He's a foam sculpture artist in New Jersey. He said, you know, we can make that. And I was like, you're kidding me. And so, absolutely. So it's hard, but underneath is foam. Yeah, so was it bed liner, though? Uh, it's kind of like that. It's yeah. a two poxy, uh, two two part uh, urethane, okay. and he sprays it. Okay. But everything's cut by hand. This is all by hand. He takes a carving knife, like you know, you're carving a chicken. Yeah, He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I don't carve chickens. I carve, <laughs> you know, stuff like this. <laughs> Pretty and you amazing. even have the level of the battery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is supposed to go bloop, 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 bloop. And that's the idea is that this is the base. This part's wood, but we were going to paint it. And so it's supposed to be that you clicked it in. This actually does roll back. Yeah, and we're going to see that yeah. in a second. Let's yeah. walk around the okay. truck first, and then we'll go more uh, yeah. inside. So the rest of it all is pretty uh, standard. Nothing's yeah. changed. It drives the same way as before. Well, yeah. I've noticed something. You said it's four-wheel drive. But yeah. The wheels are completely different. Uh, yeah, that, <laughs> that I didn't notice until it started tilting a little from the weight. Uh, yeah, that's, you know, when they import these trucks, they sort of just throw them together because they're so valuable over here because we were restricted from having such a truck. But over there, uh, they have different crash standards for a size truck like this. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, your foot is like... Is, is in the bumper. Yeah, you are the bumper, you know. <laughs> so, you know. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> you're in the... Your little footsie is like here, you know. <laughs> uh, even the seat and the, yeah. the backrest is like paper thin. Yeah, this is super thin. A really fun part about this whole thing is that it's mid-engine drive. So uh -huh. it's kind of like a sports car. Yeah. If you're like me, you grow up reading Road and Track magazine and whatnot, this is actually interesting. The engine is right in the middle where it should be. The weight is down low. So it's right underneath the seats. Yeah, I could pull one up. Speaking of which, let's have a look. Yeah, yeah. okay. New drive so what made you choose a Hyper 9? Hyper 9, I think, is overpowered for this. It's about five times more horsepower than originally. Okay. But I know the Hyper 9, Hunter at net gain is amazing. So I thought, you know, let's do a Hyper 9 and it's good for teaching. It's a great, uh, plus you don't need more than about 125 volts. So you don't okay, need a, yeah, a full yeah. Tesla pack. Yeah, right. yeah, so when you pull this up, there's your Hyper 9 sitting right there. And I do an adapter plate, and this is the stock location of where the gas engine was. Yeah, and there you could see your front axle where the four-wheel drive would be. Right. I'm a big fan of stock. Leave it well, stock. <laughs> yeah. You can tell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the dash is pretty much standard. Yeah, everything's standard. Okay. We do have uh, some former students of mine are working on a, a display that will display all your CAN bus information. Uh, shout out to Ish Ishwar and David. They're gonna uh, they're gonna finish that up when we get back to Jersey. Okay, cool. Yeah. A first conversion for my personal shop. I've done a bunch of education vehicles. Uh, but the first conversion that this is from my shop. So we just kind of did a local experimental vehicle. Yeah, uh, so I wanted to display everything. So that includes, this is a low voltage. Typically when you do a custom car, you want to like hide everything away and make it look stock, but I don't mind showing it. So these are just uh, stock 
fuse boxes, that's your charge controller, and these are the breakers for your uh, for your, all your 12 volts. So this is kind of a 12 volt area. Should I explain so, this? Yeah, yeah so okay. you have a special trick? Yeah, so it's actually really stable. It's on something called a Unistrut, and there's trolleys. That is a great product. We just keep a bolt in there so that it doesn't slide out during transport, and now it rolls really, like one finger, like one finger. One finger rollout has its own stop. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, so one finger rollout. It's running on Unistrut, yeah, the yeah. same type you'd see uh, in overhead lighting, okay. industrial application. Yeah. These are called uh, trolleys. They have three bearings and a side action bearing. Really good product. So they can't go anywhere, they can't mm -hmm. derail. And they're not, they're not getting, the there's yeah. no binding up, yeah. there's no, maybe it's going to hold, it's yeah, on there. It works. Okay. Yeah. All right, so Model S modules, mm -hmm. how many of them? Okay, so there's five, uh, so you have uh, about 125 volts, mm -hmm. uh, it's a 30S pack, and uh, 74 in P, which is natural to the, to to the, the Tesla, yeah, yeah. yeah, and basically these are like little 18650s, I'm sure a lot of people watching this channel know, yeah. but if you don't know, these are little just 18650s, the same you'd find in a drill battery, and uh, that was part of my inspiration, I thought, well, we might as well make it you know, look like where it came from, you know. <laughs> so, did you ever see the movie The Wraith? I don't know. <laughs> this nope. is like a race car movie. It's yeah. like ridiculous. And so there's like this car from outer space, but it was actually like a Dodge prototype. But when they opened the, the, the clamshell oh, back, this was like, it made an impression on me as a kid. And I was like, I want it to be where we roll it back at like a car show. Yeah. People are like, what What's is happening? Yeah. And you got everything. You got everything. You got the Hyper 9, the adapter plate, the the five speed transmission, all your high voltage. You got your your uh, Hyper 9 controller. You got your your high voltage contactor box. You got your charger, your DC to DC, and then you have your batteries and your other layer of batteries. So everything's out in the open for you to see. Yeah. So how long did it take you guys to do it all? Okay, it took us a year, but we did probably 90% of the work in one week. <laughs> the last week? <laughs> the last week. <laughs> of course, yeah. yeah. Did you need to bring it to a show? Or? This is it, we're yeah. coming to stand a charge. <laughs> this is the show. Okay, so the adapter plate is not a normal setup. Usually adapter plate is like a billet piece of aluminum. Some people have cut it out of steel in the past. And so uh, in this case, it's actually flat plate that has been matched and there's a side, a side, a side, and a side, so four sides, and it's then tongue and groove, tab and slot connected together. You can do this if you know your pattern, your B, your B face pattern for your uh, Hyper 9, and then you know your, um, if you get the, uh, the transmission bell housing, which I did by hand, I checked everything. If you know your two patterns, put them both on one face, and then buy two of them from Send, Cut, Send. Do this all in CAD. Two of them, weld it together. You don't have to worry about jigging it up because it has that tab and slot. Yeah, yeah. Super easy, works perfectly. Oh, you make it sound easy, yeah. Very yeah. cheap, very cheap. It's yeah. maybe $150 total uh, maybe all right let's see how you put this back on. okay yeah. yeah okay so uh we we tried to get it make it look like a drill so it's got the, all that indent right there and one finger should work there we go one finger uphill click <laughs> <laughs> okay so you see that this is the bed and what's nice feature of this truck is you can lay down the sides but we had to build like a structure so this is kind of like a cage that holds the batteries uh, one battery and two battery, well the two together are five, but then this also holds the unistrut up there and then you can also mount the side piece that looks like the base. And so uh, shout out to Eddie for doing an amazing welding job, former student become colleague, amazing, nice. amazing at welding. I just give him a drawing and he just made it, incredible. I just want to thank everybody back east uh, at Mr. G's workshop, it's been an incredible journey. The list is so long. Uh, you know who you are, and uh, really thankful. Everybody jumped in. We got people that worked on wiring. We got people that worked on cutting and drilling, welding, uh, uh, machining, uh, CAD work, and some also some computer work. And probably 3D scanning. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, we 3D scanned it. I just thought they looked cool, so I left them on. <laughs> yeah, so it's been a community, and the whole idea is to encourage people to want to try this as an option, uh, even if they don't do it as a career. That's not a problem. Uh, yeah, as a hobby, it's fantastic. It's yeah. great, yeah. and uh, so we, we teach classes on welding. We teach. Uh, I also teach gas engines, believe it or not. <laughs> but I think it's a good mechanical understanding. And then we also have an electric vehicle class coming up in September, once a month in New Jersey. Uh, so 
A lot of inspiration from the West Coast and now in Denver as well. Incredible electric vehicle community going on and I'm so glad to be a part of it and contribute to it. This is my little contribution, so right. thank you so much. Guys, if you like what you saw today and would you like to become one of Mr. G's students, let us know in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up and guys, we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>